Hello there. This is Ifai Obi. It's great to be here again. Today I'll be talking about pressure solutions. Pressure solutions are fluids formed due to the melting or dissolution of minerals at points where two or more grains make contact with each other, especially for rocks that have been subjected to lots of stress. It's a product of, you know, energy transfer um, due to differential stress within rocks. And you can find them in outcrop exposures or petrographic thin sections. Um, you find pressure solutions in all kinds of rocks, carbonates, plastics, you know, ignos, or even uh, metamorphic rocks and ice. Now, the next question is how do they, uh, what are the mechanisms of formation of pressure solutions and what are the other signatures we find, you know, other um, elements, we geologic elements that we also see in, in, in zones or rocks with pressure solutions. First of all, uh, pressure solutions form, uh, or rather the dissolution of greens to form pressure solutions occur at points where you have maximum normal stress. So where you have two greens in contact with each other, at the points where there is maximum uh, uh, stress, it is at those points that pressure solutions actually form, and the solution that is formed eventually flow out into another zone of lower stress. And that's that's in the form of pores or veins or fractures or any opening that's actually adjacent to the point of formation of the pressure solutions. Now, what are the uh, signatures? What are the um, you know, features that we find in zones with pressure solutions? You, you see cleavages, um, fractures, stylolites, you know, preferential grain alignments, mineral overgrowths, and some you know, kind of meta minerals. It tells you that um, in regions where you find these, you know, elements, um, you know, it tells you that there's a lot of, you know, significant stress in that region or, you know, tectonic imprints that has actually had significant impact on the rocks. And such rocks have reduced, sometimes reduced porosity, um, grain deformation in the form of, you know, changes in the shape or bending or breakage of the grains. Uh, polycrystallinity, in some cases you have you know, what was originally a monocrystalline mineral become a polycrystalline mineral. I'm, I'll be going to be showing you an example. And uh, in some other cases, you find mineral inclusions. So I'll just take you through, you know, plastic rock deformation. And let's take a look at what, what uh, typically happens. So first of all, uh, when you have rocks, you know, grains together within a, a mass of rock, a couple of things can happen. Mineral expansion can happen. Uh, like if you have clay minerals or some other minerals that actually have the tendency to increase in size. Um, external pressure, uh, which can result from tectonics or changes in uh, temperature or pressure, can actually have impact on the rock itself and actually uh, significantly uh, deform the rocks. And in all of this, the space you have for grains or even matrices to occupy within the rock mass can actually change. Uh, in the case where it's been, uh, you know, impacted by increase in pressure or mineral expansion, you're going to have reduced space. So supposing we have, you know, these six grains. Um, in this case, well, let, let's assume that each grain is an individual, all occupying a room. You, you know, we have different sizes of individual here. Some are big, some are smaller in size. But just assume this, each of these grains is an individual and all within a room. So now one thing to notice is that you have a number of contacts or pressure points. For example, in this case, uh, the individual B is in contact with Kuje and uh, Osa, and that means it's making two contacts. Why the individual Echo actually has three contacts and so on. So you also notice that there are different types of contacts. You have point contacts. Uh, like where you have echo and ulcer, that's like a point uh, contact. And then you could also have other scenarios where you have line contacts. In this case, we actually have mostly a point contacts based on this, um, you know, cartoon we're looking at. And then one other thing to note is you may have uh, stress coming from preferred direction or same stress amount in all directions. And then the amounts of stress or the strength of the deformation can actually vary. And these have very important uh, implications because they have 
different amount of impact on the rock mass. So if you take this further, you see that there are different uh, points, like we pressure points that like we mentioned, which have been highlighted in red um, arrows. And uh, I'll just also walk you through very quickly what I call the squeeze the box experiments. So now supposing you have a mass of you know rock with these six individuals in there, uh, and this is the early stage where you have the rocks uh, on the form, so everything is fine. You know we can assume that in this case every individual in that room is striving and doing very well. There's no issues. We're all good and happy. So the grains are not deformed yet. Now supposing something happens and you have some degree of you know pressure. Um, at this point, this is like the early stress regime. So you have some early indication of, you know, discomfort, discomfort or lack of comfort because of the reducing space. But right now, everything is still fine. You know, the, the grains are still okay. In other words, the individuals in that room are still fine with each other. We are still one happy team, but not a lot of complaints. Um, and supposing that continues... And things get so, you know, very intense at this stage. Uh, that will be the surviving stage. That is, at this point, you have pressures coming from all directions. And the volume of space available for these individuals or these grains have become much lesser than they can tolerate. So at this point, you have lots of complaints and everyone is, you know, blabbing out and raising alarms, this is not okay, we don't like the space, and all those and all those. So at this point, you see that the, you know, those point contacts we uh, noted earlier on have actually changed from point contacts to some kind of either line contacts or even, you know, wavy um, uh, contact between the individual. So at this point, each person or each green is actually going through some kind of pain or pressure or stress at the points where they are making contact with the next person. So right now, everything is intense. People are striving or people are struggling to, to survive this uh, condition and everyone is under pressure. So at this point, you have, you know, sutures. So it is at this point that at those points where you have the contact between each individual because of the excessive stress and excessive pressure, you now have what we call the pressure uh, solutions precipitating or forming at those contact points. And therefore, um, you know, you know what was originally some either a space or a suture or something, you know, really nice has become some kind of cementation zone between these points. And that's what we're saying. At those points, the grains have been deformed. There is cement precipitation and the pressure solutions are formed and is cementing these grains together and everything is under some very significant stress. So I'm going to show you some thin section examples of um, uh, pressure solutions and some related features like I mentioned earlier on. So this is a petrographic thin section which shows um, pressure solutions between two uh, polycrystalline uh, quartz grains. And it's actually taken from, you know, a, a section, one of our outcrop sections um, in one of the basins in Nigeria. So you can actually see those, you know, very, um, you know, wavy or contorted uh, white lines separating what we have called, uh, each of them is a polycrystalline quartz as a PQ. So separating them, it's this, you know, contorted uh, white line. And that's actually the point where you have the pressure being at its maximum. And then you have the pressure solution forming and filling up the space, and thereby cementing both of them together. So this is another um, related feature in typical of stressed regimes. Again, uh, you know, so here is also, it has a, a, a picture of, Quartz uh, overgrowths in lithic aronites, also in one of the inland basins in Nigeria. And we also see 
other indication of inter intergranular pores filled by um, iron oxide cements and uh, some you know breakage of the of the grains to form fracture pores. So this is a figure. Uh, this is a, a, a section showing um, um, tectonized uh, rock fragments. So what we see here is dominance of line contacts, um, elongates grains, and uh, you also note preferential alignment of of, of you know the, the the longest axis of each of the of the framework uh, grains. So this is all telling us that there is something unique about this this terrain or rather these sediments, whatever they've come from. Uh, they've been subjected to lots of stress. And this is all part of what we use in constructing the history or tectonic history of, of the different uh, business. This is the last um, uh, example I'll be showing, and it's actually showing some examples of heavy mineral inclusions uh, which have been taken from uh, similar uh, thin sections in similar outcrops with all kind of you know deformed um, rocks. In summary, um, the reservoir quality and pore connected volumes can be significantly impacted by basin deformation um, history, and a very good understanding of the compaction, you know, or precipitation of minerals is very important for better understanding of our subsurface and for better prediction and modeling of our reservoir rocks. Thank you very much. That's all I got for now. Uh, I do hope it was worth your time. Uh, please feel free to send me an email, send your comments, send your ideas, uh, send your questions. I'll be glad to respond. Until next time, please stay well.